Hi, this is AP Calculus Review, Notes on Displacement and Total Distance Traveled. So what happens is that we have two integral setups. One integral is where we just have V of t. And I'm going to do this with velocity, but you can translate some of this, these ideas over to any rates of change where you take the integral of it. So if we have a to b of v of, v, v of t dt, that's displacement. And so that is your net distance traveled. And so that's just kind of your, your, where you started from as compared to where you finished. That's all. While if we take the integral from a to b of the absolute value of v of t, this will give us total distance traveled. So it will include all the going forwards, going backwards, and all those distances put together. OK, so let's start off with total distance traveled. Uh, with this, we have a particle problem that we may use. And with this particle problem, we have this function right here. This says that we move along the x-axis. So it's going to be moving left and right on the x-axis. If it says y-axis, it's moving up and down. So use that in your context of your answers when you do these problems. And then we have a closed interval, 0 to 8. It's going to start at time 0 and finish at time 8. So we want to find the total distance traveled by this particle on the interval. So the first method that we've done is to find the turning points. And so we want when the velocity is equal to 0. So we go ahead and find the velocity function, which would be negative 6 t squared plus 36 t minus 48. And if we solve this out when we set this equal to 0, we'll get t equal to 2 and 4. These are our possible turning points. They might be just a resting point, but there are turning points. So we set up a t-chart with the endpoints, 0 and 8, I get from here. And then the 2 and 4, I get from here. Then I plug them in to the position function. The position function is what we started off with here. So where am I at time 0? I'm at 2. Where am I at time 2? Which is a turning point, negative 38. And notice I did turn, so I went to the left, and now I'm going back to the right. And then I figure out all these different values. So if I take the difference between these two, you can, uh, from 2 to negative 38, I get a difference of 40. So you just take one minus the other and do the absolute value. Then I do the next one, the difference would be 8. And then the next one, the difference would be 224. And what I want to do with these is I want to add up and find the total distance traveled, which would be 272. So that's one way to find the total distance traveled. The other way is to use the integral. And with this, well, we said that this is the displacement. And so if we want total distance traveled, we use this integral. Because what it will do to our function is it will bring everything above the x-axis. So here's my turning point at 2, and here's the other turning point at 4. Normally, this would go below here. And if we found this area, this would be traveling to the left. And so if I do this, I'm sorry, this is up, upside down parabola, so it's this way. And so what happens is if I did this just with my regular displacement, this would find me moving to the left since this is the velocity function, and this would find me moving to the left as well. And then this piece would be moving to the right. But if I take the absolute value, what it does is it flips everything over to the top. And when I do that, this accumulated area, and this area, and this area, would give me my total distance traveled. So this corresponds with my 40 up here. So this would be my 40. This would be my 220. I forget what that is, 228. And then this one would correspond with my 8. I guess it's 224. And this would correspond with my 8. So that's equivalent to doing that t-chart on that previous page. However, if we have our calculator, all we have to do is set up the distance or the integral to find the total distance traveled with the absolute value. Put the absolute value on the inside, not the outside of the integral. And we can just get the value straight away with 272. So this method works great if you have your calculator. If you don't have your calculator and do this absolute value, you still would have to integrate from 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 8, which is equivalent to doing the t-chart. So if you don't have your calculator, do the t-chart, calculator, use this method, and just plug it in. Use the absolute value function on your calculator. Okay. 
Now, uh, if I do an example here, find the total distance traveled from a particle from 0 to 4, given this is my velocity. Well, I don't know the antiderivative of this one. Uh, maybe you can go to Wolfram and find it, but I don't know how to do it offhand. And so what I can do is just use my calculator. From A to B, the absolute value of the velocity, I have this function all set up, and I can do it with my calculator. Notice that this took my sine function, which normally would go down below, up, down, and so on, and put everything above. So this shaded region would give me all the uh, values of the integral, which tells me the distance traveled in each one of these little bumps. Since I put it up, I made them all positive. So that gives me total distance traveled. Now if I talk about displacement, displacement is a little bit different. It's the change or the net change that you incurred over an interval. So I don't have the absolute values anymore. So what happens is that if I find that this is my net change, if I include my starting point or whatever this lower value is, this is times zero, my value at time zero and add that in, that will tell me where I am at any particular time. So I'm starting here at three. This is my displacement, my net change. So if I find out where I am at some particular time, and this was all given, I can start at the three, and then I do my net change from zero to t. Well, it depends what t value you want to do the net change to, but this would be to find out where we are. And this is in particular if I don't know how to find the antiderivative of this particular function. This one's a little bit tricky. I don't know how to do it. So we can use our calculator. So let's use this idea. So with displacement, this means I'm moving right. I'm going to be moving left, I'm moving right, moving left, moving right. So overall, I'm going to be shifting back and forth. But my net change is represented by this integral right here. So this is my initial value, the three is, and so this is where I'm starting at, and this is my change, my net change, which we call displacement. So if I do this in my calculator, I get my net change to be 0.7697, and three plus that would be this value right here. As compared to, this is my net change, this was my area when I flipped everything over above the x-axis. So it is significant. So this is just my net change. Now, what you'll see also is if I did, uh, let me take a different value. Maybe, for instance, 8 plus 2 to t of v of t dt. What does this mean? Well, this probably means that my position, x of 2, is equal to 8. And then my net change is from 2 to t. All right, so this lower value tells us a lot because this is my net change from two to some other specific value. So if I start at eight, and then that tells me that x of two is equal to eight. I don't know what else to say with that, but I hopefully understand that. Ask questions if you don't. All right, so this is a little uh, idea of the difference between displacement and total distance traveled. Total distance traveled, do the integral with the absolute value. With displacement, leave it out. And I call it also change. Thank you very much.